This episode is brought to you by my Fertility Awareness Mastery online self-study program. Learn fertility awareness from the comfort of your own home at your own pace for a fraction of the cost. Head over to fertilityfriday.com slash mastery for details. That's fertilityfriday.com slash mastery. This episode is brought to you by my very first book, The Fifth Vital Sign, Master Your Cycles and Optimize Your Fertility. With over 1,000 research citations, it is the most comprehensive resource on fertility awareness and the menstrual cycle to date. The Fifth Vital Sign is available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook formats on Amazon.com. Listen to The Fifth Vital Sign for free when you sign up for a 30-day trial with Audible. Visit fertilityfriday.com slash audible for details. That's fertilityfriday.com slash audible. This is the Fertility Friday Podcast, episode number 264. Welcome to the 264th episode of the Fertility Friday Podcast. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Lisa from FertilityFriday.com, and this is your source for information about the fertility awareness method and all things fertility. I have a great episode for you today. In today's episode, I'm sharing my interview with Catherine Dale, where we talk about lunaception and how your menstrual cycle can be related to the moon cycle. And I always found that to be really interesting when I first discovered that there was a connection between the menstrual cycle and the moon. I would often make note of where I was when I was ovulating or when I was menstruating, if it fell in line with the moon cycle. And so what I can tell you is that in my experience, it doesn't, you know, it didn't always match up, you know, perfectly or anything like that. So it wasn't magical or anything, but I would often find that I would be menstruating or ovulating with the full moon. And I just thought that that was really interesting and it made me feel a bit more connected. So for those of you who are interested in that possible connection between the menstrual cycle and the moon cycles, uh, you'll appreciate this episode. One thing I'll note that was really interesting as well, when I was researching for the fifth vital sign, I did find a study that showed that women more frequently either ovulated or menstruated with the full moon or the new moon. And so it was really interesting because it was more than just a coincidence. There was actually more of a connection there. And also the menstrual cycle varies. That's something I talk about a lot. And so most women don't ovulate on day 14 and have 28 day cycles all the time. But when we look at what the data shows us, and also in my experience of working with hundreds of women over the years, the menstrual cycle tends to average around 29 days. So although there is fluctuation, the menstrual cycle, what you'll find in a lot of the research studies is this average often falls around 29 days, which does match the lunar cycle. So random food for thought, <laughs> pieces of interesting information for you today. And if you haven't had a chance to grab your copy of The Fifth Vital Sign, it is available in all three formats now in paperback, ebook, and audiobook formats. And if you love audiobooks as much as I do, uh, you can actually grab a copy of The Fifth Vital Sign for free when you sign up for your free trial with Audible. And you'll find more information about that over at fertilityfriday.com slash audible. So with that said, let's jump into today's episode with Catherine Dale. And I'm very excited to welcome my guest, Dr. Catherine Dale to the show. During her 15 year practice as a naturopath, Dr. Catherine has focused on uncovering the mysteries of women's health, fertility, menstruation, and hormonal balance. In order to remain connected to her natural medicines, herbs, vitamins, and homeopathics, she regularly holds mindful moon meditations. Dr. Catherine will guide you to connect to the cycles of the earth and your own body's cycles, allowing you to heal your own body. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about various topics along those lines, including lunaception, the impact of light on the menstrual cycle, preparing for pregnancy, fertility, and so I'm really excited to have her on the show today. So welcome to the show, Catherine. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Well, and so you're a naturopathic doctor, and as we were just talking about in our pre-chat, you are currently across the world, so you're in Hong Kong. And so my first question to you is, um, what inspired you, I mean, to, to go into naturopathic medicine, but also what inspired you to place a special focus on the, the woman's cycle, the connection to the moon and creative energy and all of the, the types of things that you address in your practice? Yeah, well, that's like my entire life, my whole journey. There we go. The reasons why I am where I am. Uh, I'll begin, I suppose, with my grandmother. She was um, way ahead of her time. She was a whole food foodie 
she used to put entire oranges inside the blender and get us to eat these incredible creations that she made. And she was always taking care of her body, making sure she was eating low sugar and making sure that she was taking her vitamins. She was incredible. So that was really my inspiration, I feel, and so much of my family as well to get into healthcare. I have uh, nurses in my family and doctors and pharmacists. So we're all very called to the healing profession. And I suppose I feel it's a little bit like the alchemist story in that I met a woman one summer on my way back from grandma's house. So I'd been visiting my grandmother in Ottawa and I met this woman on the bus and she was showing me photos of yogis who were doing just different detox protocols and putting their bodies in all these interesting positions. And I had no idea as, you know, a young seven-year-old living in uh, quite an isolated community. Toronto was a small town back then. And uh, she told me all about this and her name was Purnima. And it was years later that I discovered that (laughs) Purnima actually meant full moon. And so I sort of realized steps and points in my life where I had encountered moon energy and moon love and connection to the moon. And as I grew older, I, you know, I started to become more and more concerned about not only the moon, but also the earth. And I went into environmental studies. I did environment and resource and sustainability studies at Waterloo. So I had a background and a concern for the health of the planet. And all of that sort of started to come together at a certain point. I had actually experienced in my own love life a kind of unprotected encounter. And I went to the doctor and I asked, you know, what, what could I do? And she asked me when my last period had been. And it sounds really silly to me now because of how much I know about fertility charting and tracking and how much I've learned about my own body and learned with women that I've been working with. But, you know, I had just finished my menstrual cycle. So she said to me, you know, you're not going to get pregnant that's not one of your concerns. So I really wanted to delve into this. I was flabbergasted that I didn't know this about my body. You know, how could I know so much about so many other things, learning about the environment and learning about ecofeminism and all these things. And how would I not know this? So I started to do a lot more research the Montreal Women's Collective put out a really good fertility booklet. And then as I went into naturopathic studies, I focused quite a bit on learning more and more about charting and cycles. And yeah, so it's all come together now. All those little tidbits, little pieces of, you know, fascinating nuts, I guess I would say, you know, little the almond trail that's gotten me to where I am. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, it's, it's so <laughs> interesting what happens as a woman when you discover just kind of the wonders of your, your body, your menstrual cycle, the inner workings. And it's really interesting how different women come in touch with that. And so in your case, having, having a nurse kind of reveal to you that you're not fertile every day, almost by accident, right? Because, um, and having that moment of like, oh my goodness, this is how that all works. It's really interesting how then it then changes sometimes the whole course of your life or the course of your career. And so I know, I mean, I've only released one episode on the topic specifically of luniception and 
the concept of how you, you know, you can cycle with the moon and also how you can even use, well, I've had two, I would say I've, I've had one episode on lunaception and one episode on the impact of light on the menstrual cycle and how women have uh, used exposure to light at nighttime on select days of their cycle as a way to potentially regulate their cycle and maybe shorten the number of days or something like that. And so that's, this is something that you speak about quite a bit. So I'd be curious to know, how did you develop the knowledge that you have about lunaception and, and how do you, you know, in your practice, is this something that you support women to do? Yeah, I was in at um, naturopathic college at CCNM and I was doing my research on cycles and charting and we were actually doing um, a study on the inter the interaction between thyroid and estrogen. And because this had always been an interest of mine, I found Louise Lacey's book in the library. And I actually contacted her a few years later and got a copy of her book as well. So I was pleased to see that you had interviewed her. And I just found it incredibly enlightening to recognize that just like other creatures on this planet, we are connected to light-dark cycles. And of course, we learn about melatonin uh, and we know about diurnal cycles and cortisol levels and all these things that come into play. But I remember learning about um, the production of eggs it was quite funny we had a subscription to an organic farm uh, when we were living in Toronto in the late 90s and when it came to be winter time the farmer said to us well there won't be any eggs for the winter and I was like surprised <laughs> what are you talking about and he said, well, the eggs don't, you know, the chickens don't lay when it's dark unless you force them to. And because we do uh, organic farming and allow our chickens to free range roam, there won't be any eggs for the winter. So I just love this kind of connectivity of my environmental concerns and my understanding of the planet and merging that with fertility. And I found that now whenever I work with women, I get them to add that to their chart. So my charting is called Fab Luna. So I have the fertility awareness space, but along with the lunar cycle. So I find that women will start to regulate even by just paying attention to the full moon and paying attention to the new moon. And it's just so important to me that we connect our bodies to the earth. I mean, I believe we're all creators. We're all here put on this earth to manifest and to create. So when we are starting to have this desire to create life, it's incredibly empowering to get in touch with the cycles of the earth. And so when we can start to admire and honor and observe the light of the moon and the dark of the moon and see how in our own lives we have an ebbing and a flowing of activity, then it really helps us get into tune with that empowered woman-centered energy and help us to become the lunar mamas, the mums that we're going to to be if that's our our decision to manifest children or manifest whatever fascinating inspiration that we have inside of us that we're wanting to birth into the world well and so there's um, an interesting relationship between the menstrual cycle and the lunar cycle that you know some of us are aware of to a greater or lesser extent and i think one of the interesting things in the research literature is that i mean we all, especially the listeners of this podcast, I mean, I talk about menstrual cycle health quite a bit, obviously. And so there's 
one of the common threads in all of the research around the menstrual cycle and the length of the cycle is that there is always variation. So as a woman from your very first period at Menarche to menopause, the one thing that all women have in common is is variation of the length of the cycle. And so at different mm-hmm. times in your life, your cycles will be different lengths. And there's just no woman on earth who will have a 28 day cycle, quote unquote, for her whole life. But one of the things that all the research does seem to agree on is that the average length of a woman's cycle falls somewhere between like 27 and 29 days. And so that matches up with the lunar cycle around that 29 day mark. And so I think what's interesting is for women who pay attention to the moon, they may notice that they're ovulating around the full moon, um, menstruating around the new moon or, you know, vice versa or something like that. You know, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, so, you know, there's different theories as to why that is. The moon affects the tides because of the gravitational pull on the earth. And so, you know, the earth is, you know, approximately 75% water, give or take. Our bodies contain about the same percentage of water. And so, you know, there's a thought of like, is the moon kind of exerting that gravitational pull? And is that why it's having this effect? And then, of course, there's the concept of the light. So Mm. having that like the full moon around ovulation, obviously exposing you to more light. Is it that aspect, the light aspect of the lunar cycle that is impacting our cycles? And so I'm curious as to what you think about, you know, why do our cycles, not every woman is going to cycle with the moon, but for women who do pay attention, many women do notice that there's a kind of a, a pattern there. So why do you think that happens? Yeah, I think what's happened is that there's a lot of fake light around us. There's more and more light now that we've got our personal devices, you know, our telephones and our readers, our Kindles and all sorts of exposure to light. And that kind of light will interfere with our normal hormonal cycling, the diurnal cycles. And that is, we're very sensitive to the light that's being uh, received by the pineal gland. And uh, just like other animals, you know that when there's darkness, when the days are getting shorter, just like the trees, you know, we're all, they're all sensitive to the shortening days. And when the days get shorter, it has an effect on creatures that they are not ovulating so when the days get longer and there's more exposure light exposure then you're getting that uh, ovulation again so with humans we ovulate on our well most of us are ovulating every month or like you said depending on how long our cycle is but the light that's coming to us Traditionally, when we would be in the elements at all times, we would be getting a bright burst of light with the full moon. And so the theory is that that light, and what I believe too, is that that light stimulates a release of luteinizing hormone. And there's a a thin skull like lining at that point near the pineal gland or you know there's light that goes into the center of the brain and allows for that change uh, in our bodies so what I do in the lunaception practice is that you are creating lunar light mimicry within your own bedroom so you're using a light to help your own cycle regulate. So you're not necessarily going to line up with the full moon and that's not completely necessary, but you are going to be able to regulate and perhaps lengthen the luteal phase depending on whether you're wanting to get pregnant or just wanting to use it as a method of contraception. So I think by completely blocking out all the light in our bedrooms at night and then exposing our bodies to the light that we are actually stimulating the body to release certain hormones. And so for the listeners who aren't familiar with the the concept of it, so then, you know, 
as a for the most part then on your average night you would have your room completely dark and i always like to you know talk about that because you know we have a lot of light pollution or uh, light exposure so even if you think your room is dark you usually you know if there's a hallway light on the light can be seeping in under your door or if even if you have your blinds drawn light can be coming in from the street and and then if you have electronics in your room you can have LED light exposure. And then if you have your TV in your room, <laughs> you can have mm. the, a lot of, you know, I think it's a, one of the things that surprised me in, in my client work is it, it's, it's much more common than you think. A lot of people fall asleep with the TV on. And so even though you think, okay, my room is dark, what we're talking about would be something more intentional where you're intentionally blocking out that light. And so for the lunar lunarception aspect of it, what you're referring to then would be exposing yourself to light for a few select days of your cycle and then outside of those few select days that the rest of it would be dark is that correct yeah that's right and there's often you know these little green lights that are kind of just buzzing away you know perhaps on the air con or if you've got anything plugged in in your room so i'm always discouraging people from having anything on in their room. And if they do have these small little lights, like you said, the LED lights or small lights, if they can cover them up, there are also, there's also the option of using an eye mask. I've been, you know, debating creating a lunaception eye mask where you can just remove the little area by the pineal gland and um, allow your pineal gland to be exposed on the appropriate days and that way you would you know be able to keep all the light away from your forehead and your eyes but yeah it's it's a hard one you know it's I've had patients who have been you know living in warehouse spaces and wondering how they're going to block out all the light but they they get on top of it and uh, start to block out all the windows and all the different lights that are coming in and just getting into a practice really of leaving your phone and leaving electronics outside of your bedroom is wonderful for your relationship and really good for sleep hygiene as well. And that's such an important part of regulating all of our hormones. There was a study actually of seniors, I believe it was in Japan, and it was actually finding that it was regulating melatonin levels and helping them improve their sleep by removing all the light in their room and regulating their cycles with blocking out that light. Well, what's interesting, so it's been a little while. I'll have to look up the episode number for the listeners, but I I interviewed Joy DeFelice, who did a study about the effect of light on the menstrual cycle. And so she teaches fertility awareness and she would encourage her clients to sleep in the dark just to see what happened. And so there is research in this area. And what she found just working with women was that a few things may happen. And I like the way that she phrased it because she said, if light is the issue, then you'll start to see improvements quite quickly. And so she gave the example of women who are experiencing repeated miscarriages who start sleeping in the dark. And then, you know, for some women, that actually improves their progesterone production. Similarly with the luteal phase. So some women have a shorter luteal phase. And then by switching to sleeping in the dark, it would help to lengthen their luteal phase. And for other women, it helps to just shorten their cycles. So for women, especially we're having longer cycles, a delayed ovulation then this kind of helps for for them to kind of tighten up their cycles. But like I said, I really appreciated when she said, it's like if light is the issue, because we wouldn't want to simplify. <laughs> There's a lot of women that have mm. challenges with their cycles who you don't want them to listen to this podcast and think, okay, well, all I have to do is sleep in the dark. I don't have to worry about anything else. Because for some women, the issues that they're having with their cycles, it's not just light exposure that's that's causing them. Although adjusting and modifying the light could certainly help. So I would Mm -hmm. just like to hear more about your experience and in, you know, when you're working with clients in your practice, how does, 
you know, adopting these practices regarding minimizing light exposure uh, and those types of things, how do those practices uh, help your clients that you've worked with? Yeah, it's a fitting in with other things that are that we're changing. Obviously, uh, if women are coming in and they haven't been menstruating, then that's you know something we're going to work on first. I like to use the cycles of the moon just to track when we're starting things. You know, I I'll bring it into when we start a new protocol for perhaps eating, starting new vitamins. So I integrate other aspects of this kind of idea that we're tuning into the energy of the creation cycle. You know, we're using it as a, as a, as a marker for how to move forward with other protocols. So of course there may be nutritional deficiencies. I've had vegan women who have had not been aware of the the needs of their bodies in order to get pregnant so we've had to work on on those issues with nutritional aspects and then i've had women who have been amenorrheic haven't had their cycle so we'll work with uh, herbs and again of course we're using the herbs often uh, in the follicular and luteal cycles. So we're, again, changing back and forth. So I'll talk to them, talk to women if they're, you know, if they're not cycling, if they don't have their menstrual cycle, then we'll use the new moon to, to chart as if we're starting with the first day of the cycle. So we'll imagine that new moon is day one of menstruation. And then on the full moon, we'll switch to the progestogenic herbs. And then we'll switch back on the new moon. And I've done that with a couple of patients. And after a few cycles, it's like the herbs are really helping, but then they're also getting in touch with the light and they're also getting in touch with those uh, cycling again of the earth. And it's it's a really empowering way to teach women about how their bodies are connected. And that's, it's been really successful working that way that women have brought back their menstrual cycle Mm -hmm. by working with the moon and with the herbs and of course nutritional. And yeah, there's so many reasons why things could be going on and thinking that you're just going to solve it all uh, with one solution is not the not unfortunately the answer. And that's why it's great to be listening to all the different women that you bring on to Fertility Friday and for women to be working with a coach of some kind or a naturopath to help them discover what it is and to try and remove the blocks to fertility and the blocks to taking care of their bodies. Well, and on the flip side, I mean, there's a certain, I've worked with a lot of women who, I mean, when you start to chart, you have the sense of what, you know, a healthy chart looks like and uh, how many days it should be and what your period should look like and how many days of mucus you should have and how long your luteal phase should be. And so there, it becomes kind of, you know, there's an ex- expectation that your chart is going to look a certain way and that your cycles are going to be a certain way. And so I just want to kind of acknowledge that because then now we're supposed to cycle with the moon as well. And, you know, mm. so I think it's helpful to know, I mean, not all women cycle with the moon. And it's not like a failure if you don't. <laughs> um, yeah, we had we had a fun little chat uh, the other day about what it meant to be on your red moon or your white moon. So if you are menstruating with the full moon, then you'd be on your red moon. And if you are ovulating with the full moon, then you're on your white moon. And it's just as about kind of tuning into different aspects of yourself again. It's like being someone who's more of an advisor, like being the wise woman, that would be on your red moon. And the white moon would be more about nurturing and caring and caring for others, uh, caring for yourself as well. So it's just a different kind of energy that you can kind of, it, you can think about that way and just thinking about like 
it's really about understanding your own moon. It's not so much when I work with women, I'm not so much saying, hey, you you have to be in tune with the the moon in the sky. It's understanding that your menses is, is a part of the cycle. And all of these words, you know, moon, month, menses, they're all from the same base word. And they all have to do with timing and cycling. And it's really about, again, empowering women to recognize that they have this internal wisdom in their bodies. And it's unique to each one of them. Uh, everyone has a different cycle in at different times of their lives and different points of the year. And depending on what's going on, you know, if you've got a trauma or if something really exciting is happening, your cycle will change. It's, it's really incredible that you have this whole creative cycle inside of you, you know, that and uh, every month it's like a mystery that uh, you're unraveling and taking a look at. Well, I think my favorite part of just the concept of lunaception and cycling with the moon, because until, so it's, it's not that new of a concept to me. I remember being in my 20s, and, you know, hearing about that, hearing about how some women cycle with the moon and starting to pay attention to it. And, you know, on the full moon, I'd either be ovulating or bleeding. <laughs> and I, it's interesting because I, I don't really pay that close attention to the moon. But, uh, some, you know, sometimes it's hard to ignore when the moon is really full and beautiful. And mm -hmm. I find that I'm either ovulating or menstru menstruating on the moon. It's not something I track. It, maybe after our, our interview today, maybe I'll be inspired <laughs> to start writing it down and actually tracking that as well. But I suppose my favorite aspect of, of this whole concept is that you, you, you do start to feel more connected to the, to the world at large and to the environment in this incredible and mysterious type of way when you realize mm -hmm. that often, not always, but Often, many women will find that they either uh, bleed with the moon or ovulate with the moon. And then it just, it, something about that connection just feels really special. So I'm not sure if you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, my, one of my main tenets is really to help women feel connected. I had, and I'm sure many people and women have had losses in their lives. But I remember at one point I had lost my dear sister, Laura, in 96, and my body just became so disconnected. I just, I remember walking through the streets and just feeling like nothing was real around me. And it was when I started to reconnect years later and started to rediscover that connection through Purnima and through this admiration that I'd had for moon energy and meditation. And I started to create this lunar calendar that I now am working on and my lunar workbook and coursework. And I really started to just watch, okay, this is the new moon. Let's feel how this is. And, and now this is actually a time when energetically people are more active. Wow, that I am more active. And I started to really just connect to those different phases and thinking about how there's times when we're really active in our lives. And then there's times when we just need to chillax and, and relax and just lay back a little bit. And as I started to watch more I just started to feel more and more connected. And that is like my desire for everyone is to feel connected, not only to the earth, but to one another. Because I think that that is a huge part of why, you know, the world sometimes doesn't work so well. You know, why people feel disconnected from one another is that we're disconnected from our planet. So just giving people something simple like this, I mean, even at the Four Seasons Hotel here in Hong Kong, there's a, a moon meditation. And I'm doing moon meditations at like the meditation studio where I'm um, practicing. And there are people coming from, you know, office towers and regular corporate jobs and coming in and being reminded of, 
hey, yeah, it's hard to ignore this big, beautiful orb in the sky, you know, and reconnecting. So it was that loss and that trauma that kind of triggered me to try and find this connection again. And it feels really good. It feels really good as a community to come together and acknowledge that this earth is providing for us. Uh, It was really fun to see another movie about the moon again, uh, you know, and how we've, we were really united. I think watching the first human step on the moon, I think it was, I don't know, a quarter of the population of the planet was watching. So we are moon lovers. I mean, we, we are moon gazers. And when we can find something to connect each other, connect to each other with, then it's really, it's really amazing. It's really powerful. Well, and you you mentioned the, just the the aspect of creativity as well. And, and, you know, one of the topics that I've talked about quite a bit on the show is just to get the sense of what happens during the phases of the menstrual cycle. And so there's the physiological standpoint of what happens after menstruation as you approach ovulation and post ovulation as you, you know, approach your next period or pregnancy. And then there's this other energetic aspect around your energy levels, how you feel, your moods, your creativity levels. And it's it's a really fascinating aspect to talk about. And I, what I think also is fascinating is that this it's a lived experience for women who pay attention to those things as they go through their menstrual cycle. But there's a lot of research that's actually been done about whether it's moods throughout the cycle or sexual arousal throughout the cycle or, you know, creativity specifically, there's a lot of research that has been done in those areas just to see how that changes and fluctuates throughout the menstrual cycle. So I'd love for you to expand upon just that connection between the menstrual cycle and and creativity. Yeah, I feel like I've talked to different women and different women have a different response to it. And I think it's connected again to whether you're on your white moon or your red moon and how you're going to respond. But there's an energy that happens following the new moon. So following what traditionally might have been the menstruation cycle or the time of menstruation. And there's this whole, I'm sure you've talked about the red tent. I remember you've had some of those guests as well. So there would have been a time when all of the women would have gotten together and had this time when we're thinking about the future, we're planning, you know, we're talking about what's going on. And so I feel that after that time, there's like this time when we start to get more and more clear about what our intentions are and what our creative intentions are, what we're hoping to create. And then after that, there comes this, real energy of taking action and leading up to the full moon we start to have this connection as well to wanting to work with other people and wanting to collaborate and if we can like mount that energy then we're working into like a manifesting of what we're going to create So it's interesting to talk to different women because some women will feel like they've got a lot of energy around their menstruation, whereas other women feel that they get it around ovulation. And it's interesting to then connect them to, well, where's the moon in the sky at the same time? And so it's like this connecting of your own cycle again to the greater cycle and and just getting in tune with it. I had to this uh, revelation about how important it is to tune into our feelings as well and not just dismiss our feelings as premenstrual tension, but to really recognize that this is an energy, a reminder to us that there's something that is dissatisfying in our life. So that kind of energy as well that's creating attention and creating awareness is really amazing to tune into. And 
maybe at the time that you're feeling it, it's not the best time to approach, you know, the issue, but being able to journal about it and think about it, meditate about what's going on and what you're disturbed about. I think that that's the, we're getting these incredible messages. So women, once we start to monitor our own cycles, then we can get really in tune with, you know, yeah, when is going to be the best time for me to be creative? And when is going to be the best time of the month for me to just benefit from what I've worked on already? And I'm finding that following the moon cycles, regardless of what's going on with my own cycle, there still is that a very strong energy there that creates a lot of creativity in the first half of, or a lot of planning and energy around creating new ideas and, and creating possibility. That's really engaging. Well, and it occurred to me, I mean, what we're talking about here is an experience that women have when they are not altering their menstrual cycles with hormones. Mm -hmm. And so when they are cycling naturally, uh, when they're ovulating and menstruating cyclically, I just kind of wanted to put that out there. I know a lot of women find the podcast when they're in a, you know, in a state of discovery. So perhaps they're planning to get pregnant within the next couple months or years, and they're wanting to find more information about what they can do to prepare their body for pregnancy, which I think is a stroke of intuition kind of peeking through, like maybe I should be doing something mm -hmm. <laughs> ahead of time to prepare. And of course, a lot of women stumble onto this work when they're P potentially dissatisfied with hormonal birth control or just wondering, like, is there another option for me? I, I feel like a lot of women, you know, they just, they, they're told that the only options that are effective and that are available to them are hormonal birth control. And so, it, you know, it's only by chance that they might discover, oh, there's actually another option for me that would allow me to cycle naturally. But also, you know, if I'm not ready to get pregnant, manage that. So for a woman listening, who's somewhere on her own journey and potentially taking hormonal birth control or something that's altering her natural cycles, you know, what if she wants to know, like, well, can I have these experiences? Can I pay attention to these things, you know, if I'm still taking hormonal contraceptives? Yeah, I'm, I, that's why it's great to have our moon out there <laughs> that is cycling every month and is experiencing full moon and dark moon every month. So women who are on um, birth control pill, I mean, it's it, it could even be possible that they, depending on, on what they're using, if they're using a single hormone or if they're using progesterone and estrogen, then they could potentially start, you know, regulating and uh, decide to menstruate with the with the new moon for fun. But yeah, I think I know that it's you're still affected energetically by the moon. And so watching what's going on with the moon is a great way to remain connected. And there are women who are using copper IUD, for example, and they're still ovulating uh, potentially. So they would still be experiencing a, a type of, or they'd still be having a regular cycle or a, a cycle that uh, would be with their own natural hormones or their own hormones. So yeah, it's it's something to, to think about too. We were talking, I've got one patient right now who is contemplating getting off of the copper IUD. And I think you actually did a talk too on the high level of copper that can result from that. So I'm always encouraging women to try to think about the option of trying without any hormonal contraception to use something that's not going to interfere with their natural hormonal cycle uh, and maybe this is just another reason why you know to uh, to to think about that um, in that you're missing out on having these natural messages from your body that are 
really exciting and interesting and also giving you all sorts of answers. I think that we're often distracted by other people's ideas. You know that we have this desire to follow other people and there's more and more uh, encouragement for people to express their own voice and and be who they are, be authentic and stand up for what they believe in. And I think that listening to your cycle is a great, great way to understand what it is that you desire and what is important to you. And so the more in touch you can be with that, the more in touch you can be with your body, then the more, again, empowered and creative and more sense of manifesting that you'll have. And all of that is so important when you're going to manifest a child, when you're going to bring a new life into the world. I mean, it's an incredible journey and it's amazing to be able to have a purpose for that and a vision for what the world could potentially be like. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and in in your (laughs) life, uh, so over the years, then you've adopted, you know, various practices and obviously this has become a big part of your life. So, you know, how has becoming more aware of your cycles in your body and the connection with the, the moon and the environment, how has that impacted your life personally? Yeah, it's been incredible. I mean, the the biggest journey into it has been in the last two and a half years or so where I've taken on this persona. A lot of my clients and friends here in Hong Kong will call me Luna Mama. And that's like an integration of the two, this concern about mama fertility and from a very young age, looking into our cycles and then also being very connected to earth and and the environment. So that comes in with the Luna or the lunar. So it's been incredible. It's been really scary on a lot of levels because it's not very scientific (laughs) to, to talk about moon energy. And I do have a strong connection to the naturopathic medicine and, the, you know, and understanding the body. But on the same level, it's kind of crazy to say that the moon is not scientific. You know, this is a part of our of our world. So, yeah, it's been life changing for me. It's it's, you know, where I find my tribe is where I find people that are interested in doing the work that I do. You know, when I, when I hold a moon ceremony or even if I just hold a a meditation and talk to people about times for relaxing and times for healing and, and times for being active, they really resonate with that. And it's like they're, they're remembering, ah, this is what's missing. I'm missing this connection. So it's been really exciting for me. And it's been, when I, when I lose track, when I stop paying attention, then I find I get off the track. I I get out of the flow again. But if I can just stay in the flow and remember and stay in touch and do my meditations and, and help other people to remember I'm it's in a, I'm in a much better flow and it's really fun to see how many people now there are within my city within Hong Kong that are doing moon ceremonies and full moon ceremonies and moon yoga and moon gong baths and all these things that are that are really focused around it and how we're collaborating this way so it's been really important for me to start to own this, uh, this love, this passion of mine. And it's been beneficial for the women that I'm working with and the people of Hong Kong (laughs) and hopefully your listeners and perhaps you to just, yeah, this is a simple way to reconnect to the planet and to the cycles of the earth. Mm -hmm. Well, and so just kind of given the topics that we've talked about today and the connection between the moon and the menstrual cycle and creativity and just just kind of all of the different topics that we've touched on. 
what is the one thing or the biggest takeaway that you'd want the listeners to leave from with our to leave our conversation with today? Yeah, my biggest takeaway that I would want them to recognize how their bodies as women are creative manifesting beings and that regardless of whether they're reproducing and producing children they have this creative potential within them and by connecting to moon cycles and connecting again to your own cycle you can start to tap into that creative energy and really allow your body to flow it flows into relationships it flows into your work it flows into your relationship with yourself and you're just feeling a satisfaction and happiness so i really encourage people to gaze up at the sky and recognize that they are connected and have this incredible powerful connection to creative energy mm-hmm. well those are wonderful words to end on mm-hmm. Catherine, thank you so much for being here today and just, you know, shedding some light on the connection between the menstrual cycle and the moon cycle and encouraging all of us to connect with the world that we live in. I think it's really important just to think about these these things, especially in the world that we're living in, all the crazy light exposure and just we're in a very interesting place, I would say, that often really disconnects us from our natural world. So I think it's an important reminder for all of us. Yeah, I agree. It's really important. And especially when it comes to fertility, you need to be connected to your body and connected to what you're eating and what you're putting into your body and exposing yourself to. So yeah, it's a, it's a great message from the moon. Well, and where can our listeners go to find out more about you and, and what you do? Yeah, I'm at Dr. Catherine Dale everywhere uh instagram and facebook and my website so they can reach out to me there and i've got a new lunar calendar that and workbook that i'm promoting as well and i'd love to give your your readers a special offer you can maybe put that in the show notes so that people can start to connect to their moon great Um, Well, we can, I will put all those links in the show notes page. So if you're on the go, you don't have to worry about writing it down right now. But thank you so much for being here, Catherine. It was a a lot of fun to have you on the show. Great. Yeah, I really enjoyed chatting with you. Thanks so much, Lisa. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please share it with a friend. You'll find the show notes page for today's episode over at fertilityfriday.com slash 264. I hope that you enjoyed my interview with Catherine. It was such a treat to have her on the show and really interesting to chat about the moon cycles and menstrual cycles and just delve into how that can really connect us back to our bodies and back to the connection that we have uh, with the world around us. I think for a lot of women, one of the biggest shifts that happens when you start charting your cycles is just connecting with your body in a way that you didn't before. And what I've often found is that when you see how your cycle can shift, sometimes in more subtle and sometimes in more obvious ways, you know, especially as it relates to different changes that you might be making in your diet or your lifestyle. If you're, you know, making a bunch of changes to improve your health overall, it can be just really powerful to see how that can positively affect your cycles and really put the control and the power back in your hands because you realize, wow, there's a lot I can actually do to affect my cycles and my health. Whereas perhaps before you may not have felt that there was a whole lot you could do, especially if you've been told by a health practitioner that there's nothing you can do. Uh, So I, I find that that discovering the connection, you know, if any, between your menstrual cycle and the lunar cycle can be yet another way to just connect you to what's happening in your body, in your cycles, and also to the broader environment. And it's such a romantic notion to think that we menstruate, you know, in line with the moon. And, you know, some of us do. Some of us do menstruate around the new moon or the full moon. And, and kind of vice versa with ovulation. So it can be really exciting just to think, wow, I'm actually connected to this world in this really unique way. 
And so if you enjoyed this episode with Catherine, or if you know somebody who you think would benefit from listening to it, you can share the episode by sharing the episode link, which is fertilityfriday.com slash 264. And we'll be chatting about the possible connection between the menstrual cycle and the moon cycle in the Fertility Friday Facebook community. So head over to fertilityfriday.com slash community for your invitation. And with that said, I want to thank you for spending some time with me today, for tuning into the show, of course, for helping me spread the word and sharing with your friends. There's recently been a pretty big influx of new listeners, and it's really exciting. Welcome. We're glad to have you here. And I appreciate all of you for being so supportive of the show because that's how the show continues to grow and more and more women discover the incredible connection between their fertility, their menstrual cycles, and their overall health. And of course, if you're wanting to go deeper into these topics, I have prepared an incredible resource for you in my book, The Fifth Vital Sign, with over a thousand research citations. It really dives deep into the connection between your menstrual cycle and your overall health, as well as the fertility awareness method. You'll appreciate The Fifth Vital Sign as a resource that you'll be able to turn to time and time again. It's available on Amazon and you can actually listen to the fifth vital sign for free with your free trial of audible over at fertilityfriday.com slash audible. And with that said, thank you again. I hope you enjoy your week or weekend. Thanks again for spending some time with me today. And of course, as always, until next time, be well and happy charting.